Number 47. Under what conditions is N2O3 gas, which will yield NO gas plus NO2 gas, spontaneous? Okay, so under what conditions? What does that even mean? Well, we want to find out the parameters, but what parameter are we looking for, right? Well, we want to find out whether this reaction is spontaneous. And there's only one value that will link spontaneity with a, with a uh, balanced equation. And spontaneous or non-spontaneous is dictated by a Gibbs free energy, which is a delta G value. So we need to know when the cutoff is for when a reaction will be spontaneous. Now keep in mind that you have delta G values that's going to be negative, and then they can go all the way to becoming positive. But now what's the cutoff or what's the break number between a negative and a positive? There's only one number that's not negative and not positive, and that's a zero, right? Anything below zero is obviously negative and anything above zero is obviously positive. So the thing is that if you're in the negative realm, right? Negative delta G values are always spontaneous. So that means that the reaction is just going to run. It's just going to go to the products. No additional energy is needed. So we're good with that. On the flip side, if you now are increasing and you have a delta G value that's positive, that means that the reaction is not spontaneous. And that means that you will need some additional external energy source to push this reaction to the products. So what is the cutoff here? I want to only know when this condition will become spontaneous. So I want to know basically of any slightest negative value all the way to the biggest negative value, right? So basically we want to figure out what the parameters are or what the conditions are when a delta G equals zero, because even the slightest negative, right? If I say negative point zero, 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 one, technically this is still negative, right? So it's easiest to just say, what is the conditions at zero? Because the slightest negative over boop, is spontaneous reaction. So we found out secretly that we're looking for a delta G of zero. Now, under what conditions? There's certain temperature values that will lead us to a delta G of zero. And that's what we're looking for. When they're asking for what conditions, they're secretly looking for what temperatures will give me a spontaneous reaction. And in this case, we're looking for that cutoff of delta G equals zero. So, what is the formula that links a delta G value with the temperature? Well, there's two of them, right? There's one with an equilibrium constant and there's one without. Now, they didn't tell me any K value here. No K values, no equilibrium constant values, so I can't use that formula. So I go to the other one, which is this one. Delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. Here, and maybe I'll just put this over here. You'll see in, in about two seconds why. Here is my delta G value. We know that we're searching for zero. And if we want to add the units, this would be kilojoule per mole. Standard delta G value is kilojoule per mole. We're searching for the temperature. But the thing is, is that I don't know what the enthalpy value is, the overall delta H of the reaction and the overall delta S of the reaction. But I can look in the appendix of textbooks right? I can go into the textbook, and that's exactly what I did, to grab each individual enthalpy value and entropy value for each substance in this balanced equation. Because then we'll, we, we will find the overall delta H, that's this guy, and we can find the overall delta S, that's this guy. So what is the formula to get an overall delta H? Well, it's this formula right here. Maybe I'll just make this a little bit lower. All right, delta H for the whole entire reaction, Rxn as reaction, will equal the sum. So that's the sum 
That just means you got to add up all the products and minus from the sum of all the reactants. So essentially, it's just products minus reactants. So are these numbers going to be the same or are they going to be different? Well, it goes by the coefficients of the balanced equation. You had one N2O3, you had one NO, you had one NO2. So for good practice, whatever value that you find in the back of the textbook, you will times them by that coefficient. But in this case, they're all being multiplied by one. So we'll just leave it. Now you have to sum them up, right? Literally, it's NO plus NO2. So add those two values together. Here you only have one reactant, so you don't have to add anything. So the overall reactant side is still 83.72. But for this, you just have to add them. 90.25 plus 33.2. And you get 123. 123.45 products minus reactants. So let's find that out. Delta H for the whole entire reaction equals products. 123.45 minus the reactants, which is 83.72. Delta H for the whole entire reaction is, let's see, this number, enter minus 83.72. So I get 39.73, and that's kilojoules per mole. Okay, so we got the first value. Delta H is done. So I could just come over here and say, okay, I have my delta H. That's 39.73 kilojoules per mole. Now we, all we have to do is just do the same thing for delta S. So I can use the same formula, which was this one for the delta H, but instead of having H's in there, I can get rid of all the H's, goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye, and I will put S's. So here's an S, here's an S, and here's an S. The delta S for the whole entire reaction is the sum of the products minus the sum of the reactants times them by their coefficients, just good practice. They're all one, so they're gonna be the same. And then add up the two products. The reactants will still be the same, 312.17, but then 210.8 minus 240.1, 210.8 plus, ooh, catch that mistake. That should be a plus because we're adding them, 240.1. And we get 450.9. So delta S for the whole entire reaction equals um, 4, yep, 450.9 minus the 312.17. Okay, so let's see what we get. Delta S for the whole entire reaction equals this value minus 312.17. So we get 138.73. And these units would be joules per mole times Kelvin. So I have this value over here. 3... 138, right? 138.73 joules per mole times Kelvin. But now, just check your units. Kilojoule for delta G, kilojoule for delta H, joule for delta S. Uh-oh. So we have two kilojoules, right? The units of energy have to match. We have two kilojoules. So it probably would be easiest to just convert the delta S joule value into kilojoules. So let's just quickly do that, right? How do I go from joules to kilojoules? Well, joules to kilojoules is just dividing by a thousand. You could take the decimal, move it to the left three spots. Same thing. So this would be 0 
And now that's the number that goes on in here. So I'll get rid of this and I'll say 0 0.13873. And now we're ready to go. So 0 equals 39.73 minus x times the delta S value, 0 0.13873. Let's solve. I'm going to subtract the 39.73 because we want to get the x by itself. So that goes bye-bye. So negative 39.73 equals a negative 0 0.13873 times x. So we can just divide on both sides by the negative 0 0.13873. This goes bye-bye, and we're solving for a temperature. So x equals, let's see. I can basically just take this value, the 39.73, and divide it by 0.13873, because a negative divided by a negative is a positive. And this is the answer in Kelvin. So you get roughly 286 Kelvin. So this temperature is the start. That's at zero degrees Celsius. But remember, just a slight negative will kick it to the spontaneous realm. So this is the starting temperature. But now, do we say that it's 296 Kelvin and above or 296 Kelvin and below? Well, if you increase the temperature value, you're putting more pressure into it. So it's going to go more to your product side. And going more to your product side means that you're becoming spontaneous. So this would be 208, uh, 286 Kelvin and higher. So it would be 286 Kelvin and up. Actually, what I'll do is I'll we'll just put the answer in the middle. So we'll say 286 Kelvin and higher. Those are your conditions. So any temperature value that starts at 286 Kelvin, and if it's increasing, if it's higher than that, it's going to be spontaneous. And that is the conditions. So there you go. Woo, this one done. I hope this helped. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Tell your friends, tell your classmates about this cool channel. We're almost at 25,000 subscribers, and we also have different subjects on the channel as well. We have physics and math at the moment. We got like over 4,000 questions. So I think, I think we can help you out in those subjects. So go check it out. All right. I hope you're having a great day. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.